Church Online. I'm Liz. And I'm Sabrina. We're so glad you're here today. If you're joining us online, live stream, YouTube, or Facebook, please comment below. Let us know that you're here and where you're watching from. Yeah, and if you're a guest with us today, we want to welcome you as well. We'd love for you to check out our website, churchontheav.com, for more information about our church, who we are, what we believe, and also there's a special place right there for you to fill out a connection card. Let us know that you are here today, and if you're ready to take a next step of faith, help us to know how we can connect with you better. So please take a moment to check out our website, churchontheav.com. Thanks for being here today. We are so excited about regathering together next Sunday, June 7th. Sabrina, are you and the boys pumped? We are so pumped. Yes, me too. And we are so excited for you to join us, whether it is in person here at the church or online through our new live stream technology. We truly believe that this new technology will make it feel like you're here even when you're watching at home. Absolutely. And so we want to just encourage you right now, if you could help us out, head to our website, churchontheav.com, and let us know how you'll be regathering with us, whether you'll be joining us for our 9 a.m. service here in person at Avenue, or you'll be gathering with us at 11 o'clock through either our sanctuary seating, our new family service that we're offering in our chapel, or if you'll be gathering online as a family or as a, a missional community at 11 o'clock online. We'd love for you to take a moment to fill out that form via our website so that we can get a better idea of how many people will be attending each service. Again, we are so excited about regathering and super excited about this new series that we'll be getting on June 7th, Absolutely. When Life Gives You Linen. Good morning, Avenue Kids! We're so glad that you're here, and we're excited about regathering with you again this coming Sunday, June 7th. Parents, we want to let you know that you are welcome to bring your kids to either the 9 a.m. or the 11 o'clock service. Or, as always, you're welcome to continue to keep watching online for our Avenue Church online services. But we wanted to let you know that if you are interested in gathering for our family service at 11 a.m., it will be located in the chapel where Avenue Kids um, usually meets. We wanted you to know that in order for you to have the best experience for your kiddos, we encourage you to bring a device for each one of your kiddos along with headphones. We will have some available if you need them, as we will be showing them a special Avenue Kids Edition digital service that we've made just for them. We will be discussing the parables of Jesus. So we would love for you to join us again for that family service at 11 a.m., but again, you are welcome at either one or continue to watch online. These services will be made available to you through our website starting next Sunday, June 7th. So Avenue Kids, we can't wait to see you. 
Remember Avenue, we have an awesome opportunity to partner with Love Inc. and fill the truck. You can participate by two ways. You can go to the Love Inc. Facebook page, like and share this event to gather even more participation. Or you can meet us on June 6th at the Area Agency on Aging parking lot in Ontario from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and bring your items that you would like to donate, whether it's hygiene products or cleaning products. We hope to see you there and we look forward to more opportunities like this in the future. Another great way to participate in serving this coming Saturday, June 6th, is through the Matthew 25 Outreach Center. We'd love for you to join us anytime between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. in the Mansfield Senior High School parking lot for this special ministry that provides boxes of food for area families in need. Please make sure you wear your Avenue t-shirt and look for Stacy Strickler, who will also be wearing her Avenue t-shirt, to gather and to be able to help this ministry here in our community. We hope you'll find a way to serve on June 6th as we get excited to continue to the work that God has been doing during this time of um, being away from one another. We would love for you to take time to serve our community and love on your neighbors on June 6th as we prepare for regathering on June 7th. If we haven't already had a chance to meet, my name is Liz Holtz, and I have the privilege and honor of serving here as Ave at Avenue Church as the associate pastor. But more than that, I'm one of the family members here at Avenue. I get to actually see each and every day, each and every week, and throughout the month and year, how your giving makes a huge difference and impact, not only in our church family, but in our community, in our um, country, and throughout the world. This last February, I had an opportunity to be able to go and be the hands and feet of Christ um, across the globe. I had an amazing time in the Dominican of being able to serve and actually get to see these faces that we um, make a difference in through our giving. It was such an honor and privilege. I was blessed so much more than I ever expected to be the blessing to them. But all of this is possible through your generosity, your giving each and every week here at Avenue. We're able to do things in our building and throughout this community and around the world. We wanted to thank you so much for your generosity over the last few months. We have been blessed to see the amount of giving that has continued here at Avenue. In fact, even in the midst of all of the changes going on in the last three months in our world, and maybe even in your life situations, we've st still continued to see generosity rise. We wanna thank you for that. In fact, because of your generosity, we're able to do things like upgrade our technology so that more people can gather with us online and hopefully are reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our hope is, is that through our online services, we'll be able to touch people in our community and outside of our, even our state that maybe would have never walked into a church building. This is all because of what you've been able to do through the generosity. God has blessed us so much, and we give back each week as a blessing and an offering back to Him to thank Him for all of the things that He's done for us. Remember, nothing that we have is ours. It's all His to begin with. If you're a guest here today at Avenue, we want to let you know, feel no obligation to give. We hope this service is a blessing to you. If you call Avenue home, we'd love for you to use one of our four options of giving. First, you're welcome to drop those off in your gift anytime, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Or you're welcome to bring those with you next Sunday, June 7th, as we regather here. Also, you could use the online PayPal method. Also, you could use your automated bank method. And a new way that we have to give is called text to give. Simply text the number 419 670-6640. Put in the amount that you would like to give, and then it'll send you a text back to prompt you how to move forward from there. Thank you again for your generosity. We love you guys and cannot wait to be together again on June 7th.
there's some strange and crazy things going on all around us. There's some of us that are working from home. There's some of us that are still out there in our businesses with our employers, with our fellow employees. We have to come together in peace. And the only way that we can have that peace is if you are at that center, Father. We need you to be that cornerstone. And we believe that you are. You are the great I am. You are. You are the center of our hearts, the center of our peace, the center of our comfort. The world can be as confusing as it wants to be. Because when we have you at our core, when we have you at our center, nothing else matters. It is my prayer today that we can block out the confusion for this moment. And we can let your peace fall on us, Father. Let your spirit move. Be the light that shines washes away the darkness. Take us where you are, Father. Oh 
on, man. Some people only care about themselves. Some people treat others poorly. There's certain things that are right and there's certain things that are wrong. So don't believe what you're talking about. Some people only care about being right. Some people don't seem worth the time. But the truth is. Most people are just working to get by. Most people are terrified to reveal their scars. Most people are fighting an invisible battle. Most people are worth the effort. Because all people are created in the image of God. Where's my pillow? All people carry the glow of the divine. All people matter enough for God to become one of them. God thinks every person is worthy of love. Imagine if we did too. Let's be a church where everybody's welcome. Nobody's perfect. And anything is possible. Well, good morning. I'm so glad again that you guys could join us today, or if you're watching this later on this week, whatever it is, I want to say welcome. And again, I'm so glad that you came today. Um, and, and we're starting just, I'm doing a one day topic t entitled United. It's worth it. And the question is, is, are we united? That's the kind of the thing I want to wrestle with a little bit today. But before I get going, I just want to kind of make sure that you know, before anybody else signs off or something like that, just to say that next week we are regathering, and I'm so excited about regathering. But here's what we want you to do. We have four experiences, and whether or not you're going to stay home and watch it online, we want you to go on churchontheapp.com and make sure that you do register, even if you're going to stay home and do it online. We want to know how many people are going to be in each experience so that we're prepared and ready for that. Also, again, if you're going to invite somebody, register for them or have them register as well um, so that when we do, if we do maxim, uh, get to the maximum um, capacity, we want to make sure we're ready for that and how we uh, move forward on that. All right. So again, that just want to get you ready for next week. Now today, um, again, I'm really excited to talk about this idea. I think I'm going to wrestle with, I'm going to wrestle your feathers today. Uh, or I should not wrestle, but ruffle your feathers today. And um, I, I know it's going to be difficult at times, but I want you to stay with me because remember, everything that I'm going to share with you today is a biblical context written and, and talked about in the right context of why it was written. And I want to make sure that we understand um, the priorities we have. So I'm just going to go ahead and forewarn you. Please stay through the whole message or you're going to miss out on bringing it all to a conclusion at the end. Now, here's the first thing. I kind of want you to know this about myself, is that I have, I have participated in every bad decision I have ever made. I have, I have personally participated in every bad decision, everything that I've done, I have ever made. I mean, when you think about um, finances, you know, when we've made poor decisions of finances, I was at the center of that. When we've made, when I've made poor decisions in marriage, I was at the, at the center of that. When I, when I messed up in certain relationships that I had, I have been at the center of that. Um, when I've messed up with my career at times, I, I participated in that bad decision making. And more importantly, when I have made uh, horrible health decisions, you know, eating the things I shouldn't, how many times I'm eating, you know, all those things. 
Um, my health has not has always been as, as good. Um, I was at the center of those bad decisions because I don't want to, in, in essence, blame people for decisions I have made. You know, a lot of times I think, um, I always want to think about this, what's the common denominator in all of those? Well, I am. I'm the common denominator. Now, I'm going to tell you something that you're probably not going to like or you probably don't want to hear, but here's what it is. You have participated in every bad decision you have ever made. Yeah, it's true. You have participated in every bad decision you have ever made. Now think about that. Your greatest regret, regrets typically have happened when you're at the center of it. You know, a lot of times, again, I'll go back to this common denominator thing. When you start sitting here thinking about multiple things that have occurred in your life, whether it's multiple marriages, whether it's uh, multiple career changes, whether it's, it's bad relationships, whether it's an ongoing issue with your finances, whatever that is, maybe it's poor health decisions. Listen, you have made the decisions that ultimately have affected your life, which means when you look at all of those things, the common denominator in all of our horrific decisions is you. You're the common denominator. Therefore, a lot of times, you're the problem. A lot of times, I'm the problem. No one else is to blame but myself. So the question, I, here's what I want to get to. Here's kind of what I want to build on today is, is what I'm saying, uh, this is for you and me, is what I'm saying and what I'm doing approved by Jesus? Has it got Jesus' approval stamp on it? Is what I'm saying or what I'm doing approved by Jesus? Would he sign off on it? Would he say or do it in light of everything that is going on right now in our country and in our community? Would he do that? Would, our, would the things that we put on social media or the way that we treat people, would that be approved by Jesus? Would it be approved by Jesus? As Americans, we must take a hard look at ourselves. And as a church, we must take a hard look at ourselves and the, ask the question, are we united? Now, here's a, here's a question I want to kind of throw at you to talk about this first part to get us to where we're going today. Does our, citizen, does our citizen, citizenship as Americans dictate our faith? Does our decision, does our citizenship as Americans dictate our faith? Or does our faith dictate our citizenship as Americans? Now this is a very important thing, uh, topic, idea we need to propose to one another because a lot of times based in our culture, this is the one that we choose in order to live our lives. But really, this is the one we should be focusing on. Does our faith dictate our citizenship as Americans? Now, we want to say, we want to say, yes, this is it. But the issue isn't that really we want to say it. It's that what does our life show? And a lot of times it shows this. Our citizenship as Americans dictate our faith. Because think about the local church right now. Think about your history of the local church. Think about your view of Christianity. A lot of that is surrounded by the culture that you live in. You are filtering your faith and you filter the words of Jesus through the lens of being an American citizen instead of filter, filtering your citizenship as Americans through the faith that we have in Jesus' death and resurrection. That's a big deal because the reason that's a big deal is that the reason that we need to focus on this and not so much this because this divides us, this unites us. This divides us, this unites us. And that's where we're going to wrestle with today. So I kind of wrote some of these things out right now. The greatest threat right now, bar none, bar none, the greatest threat right now to our American society is the lack of unity of the church. Bar none. At the end of the day, the reason that people, in a sense, struggle with Christ, following Christ or Christianity, understanding being a part of a local church congregation, is because the church lacks unity. And even inside of our local churches, if you just take each local church by itself, and in and of itself right now, each local church is not unified. 
Case in point, what's going on right now with the pandemic, right? Now, this is the thing that, this is all over the internet. This is all over uh, video chats and, and things that pastors and leaders are having all across our country. You can see it in the videos that pastors are trying to share with their own congregations. This is right now, there are major differences on both sides of this equation. Some people, some people are already ready for this to be done, like go back to life as normal. We don't need the mask. We don't need the six foot, you know, uh, uh, spacing, distancing, whatever it is. You know what? And, and, the, and the government shouldn't dictate, you know, when churches can and cannot meet. You know, they're violating our religious freedoms. We need to get back now and we need to forget all this and let's go. That's one side of the equation. The other side of the equation is like, whoa, 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 whoa. We need to do what the government is asking us to do because they're trying to keep us safe. And therefore, you know, I have a, I have a higher risk of, a, you know, getting this. You know, I have a failed Im immune system or I have a vulnerable immune system. You know, I don't want my grandparents to get this. I don't want my parents to get this because I don't know if they can make it through this. I don't want to get this. Maybe it's because I have some kind of health issue already. Like, this is a big deal. And we should stay we should stay home. We should stay still uh, like in our houses, you know, go outside, work outside and things like that. But we need to be there. But every time we go out, we need to be wearing masks, all kinds of stuff. Right now, that is dividing the church. And the funny thing is, is that Christians don't care that it's dividing the church because you're paying attention to this. In fact, there are pastors who have shared on Facebook, on some of the, on these pastors' uh, uh, groups that I'm in, there are people in their congregations on both sides of the equation who are threatening, who are, or who are some of them are, are considering calling the cops if certain things happen. I mean, I just right now, I feel like Satan, or I should really say that Lucifer is having a heyday with trying to divide the church. And the question is, is are we going to let him or are we going to stand united and be the church that we are called to be and know that we need to be? What should our response be with people on social media? And there were questions I wrote out. How should we conduct ourselves in public, at work, with our friends, and on social media? Because at the end of the day, how would Jesus conduct himself? And that's what I want to share with you today. I want to share you the rules that we are, as Christians are supposed to be. If you're kind of like, man, Nate's kind of fired up today. Because I am fired up. Because here's what I don't understand. Is why this hasn't made the point of what we are supposed to be. But we've allowed this to become their circumstances. For some reason, we have decided that American Christianity is the thing that gets it the, the, this is the way the world should understand Christianity. And a lot of times, the way that we dictate our faith and our lifestyle has nothing to do with anything that he, the Hebrew or Greek culture that we have in the, in the written Hebrew and Greek texts of the scriptures actually teach us. And we're missing it. And we're missing it. And if we don't wake up, we're going to miss the opportunity of a lifetime to help people see, find, and follow Jesus, which is the mission of Avenue Church. So yeah, I am fired up. Because at the end of the day, I hope as Avenue Church, and I hope as the local churches in our community and around the world, this becomes what it is. Does our faith dictate our citizenship as, and then you can fill in the blank for whatever country they're in. But for us, it's America. So I want to share with you today some really important principles and values and things that we're going to see in Scripture. I'm not going to, I'm not going to live on it very long um, because a lot of the Scripture I'm sharing with you today speaks for itself. And I think it's something that we need to wake up. We need to be paying attention to. And I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. I don't care. I don't care if you're independent. I don't care if you're on the mask side or in the non-mask side. I don't care. I care that we're on team Jesus. I know that sounds kind of corny, but that's the, that's the point. That's where we are. Because we are eternal. We are eternal. We're living, therefore we're going to live now forever. We had a beginning. But now we're going to live for forever. The question is, is which, which side do we want to be on? I hope it's not the side of masks or not masks. 
I hope it's not on the side of, yeah, I want to be together in church or I want to stay at home and watch online. I don't, that shouldn't matter. None of that should matter. We're missing it if we don't realize what did Jesus say? What did the New Testament writers show us? What, does, what is the complete narrative from Genesis to Revelation show us? So, two principles of faith as Americans. Number one is when government uses authority, we must obey. Stay with me. Because I know right now you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Some of you are like, I don't know about that. Stay with me because I want to show you what does Scripture teach us. When government uses authority, we must obey. So the Apostle Paul is, ta- is actually writing a letter to this. And he's actually writing it to the church in Rome. And it makes sense that he would write it to the church in Rome because right now he's living in a Roman society. In fact, everything about the known world, the Roman Empire is doing. And not only are they overseeing it, and not only are they the authority of the government of the day, but in that authority, they have taxed. They have beyond taxed people to the point that they can't really survive or live um, to do the things that we as Americans can do. And they have so many rules set up to make sure that the poor stay poor, that the slaves stay slaves, and the rich stay rich. That's how the Roman Empire is set up. And if you get out of line, they will crucify you, they will behead you, and they will imprison you. There is no justice. And this is the world in the first century that the first century Christians, the second century Christians, and some of the third century Christians lived in. So what does the Apostle Paul tell the church in Rome during a dictatorship, in a sense, of Caesar? What does he say to the Roman church? And here's what he says. He says, everyone, everyone, let me say it again, everyone must, and there's that word, submit. Everyone must submit to governing authorities. What? What? But, you know, but, but Paul, this is the United States of America. Like, I, I sure, he's like, United States of America? What, why don't you come back 2,000 years and live in the rule that I lived in? Lived under the occupation of the Roman world that I lived in. You'll be grateful for what you have today. Everyone must submit to governing authorities for all authority. Woo! All authority. Can you imagine as Christians living in China right now? Christians living in the, in the Middle East, whether it's Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, Iran, you know, like Turkey. Do you, can you see that? For all authority. All authority comes from what? God? Are you sure about that? For all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there, put in there, by God. No, 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 no. That, that's not true, Paul. See, I, I voted, right? I, uh, 2016, I went and I placed my vote, and, and the winner is the one who got, hmm, I orchestrated all that. Yeah. He goes on to say, So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. I mean, this is a big deal, which gets us back to the question again. Do we see the world, do we see faith through us being American citizens, or do we live out our faith, yet we're still American citizens? Do we allow our faith to dictate our citizenship, or do we let our citizenship dictate our faith? Paul is saying... You need to let your faith dictate your citizenship. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right, and they will honor you. Well, wait a minute, but what about all those bad leaders out there? We're not done. We're going to get there. The authorities are God's servants, sent for your good. But if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid, for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants, sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. So you must submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. To keep a clear conscience. 
pay your taxes too. It's kind of like, oh, we need to make sure we throw this in there because, you know, this is not something that we would do very well, right? Pay your taxes too for those for these same reasons. Now remember, the tax rate in the first century is extremely high compared to what the tax rate is here in the United States of America. Pay your taxes too for these same reasons. For government workers need to be paid, and they are serving God in what they do. Give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them, and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. Now I know some of you sitting right here are like, I don't like anything that you just said. I know. Because the question is, is where's our, where, how do we view the world? Do we view it through our faith, or do we view it through our American citizenship? How do we view the world? Well, in fact, I want to share with you what the Apostle Peter said. The Apostle Peter wrote a letter, too. And here's what he says. He says, for the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority. Wait, wait a minute. So the Apostle Paul was just saying this to the church in Rome, and now Peter is saying this to Christians. He says, Submit to all human authority, whether the king as head of state or the officials he has appointed. For the, kings, uh, for the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. So there's something significant here because it's not just the words of Paul, but now these are the words of Peter. It is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish doc, uh, accusations against you. For, for you are free. Now, in America, we can say, yeah, I'm free. Some of us may be like, well, I don't know. Some of our freedoms are being challenged right now. But what he's saying is, is for you are free. Yet you are God's slave, so don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. And aren't we seeing that right now? Come on, let's ask ourselves the question, aren't I doing this right now? Are you doing this right now? Are we doing this? No, no, I'm just giving my opinion. But is your opinion putting down some kind of per person, a group of people, or attacking government officials? He says, for you are free. Wait a minute. Peter, I understand what you're saying, but you lived in the first century Roman occupation, heavily um, uh, punished uh, uh, group of people known as the Roman citizen, done by Caesar and the Senate. You're free? Well, Peter's trying to get at, in the larger context of this narrative that he's written, that we're free because we follow Jesus. We follow Jesus. He's the one who set us free. Listen to what he says. Respect everyone and love the family of believers for God and respect the king. The situation we are in, the government for the most part, wants to protect people. Whether they're doing it out of selfishness or service. For the most part, our government is technically designed to be run by the people and for the people, right? Yes, people overstep that boundary. But at the end of the day, if we hold on to what Jesus or what Paul and Peter say, these people were not just put in there by voters. These people were specifically put in there because God has them in there for a purpose and a reason. And I'm not sure what those reasons are, but they're there because of that. And with the limited data and not understanding much of what was going on, they had to do, they considered what was best. And that's when they closed down, that's when they closed down the country for the most part, because they had no idea what was going to take place. I think all of us sitting in that situation may have done the same thing. And I hope and I hope and pray that many of them did this with a ton of wisdom, that they were praying to the God of the universe, which is the Father of Jesus, right? I hope they were doing that. I really do hope they were doing that. But I don't know. But now in Ohio, the church has always been essential. So let's get just to Ohio for a second. The church has always been essential. Governor DeWine made sure that we were essential. And so, and so we never had to, quote, unquote, close our 
doors. But the reason most of us shut down was out of respect for the authority of the government and the authority and the care for the people because we as church leaders didn't even know technically what was going on and what we should do. And now that we know more from our leaders, this is why churches are finding different ways to begin regathering based on their understanding of their own local congregations. Now, this is why it's also so important that we aren't like comparing ourselves to other churches. This is why it's so important that pastors aren't comparing themselves because at the end of the day, God has called each of us to shepherd different congregations, understanding the situation we're in and doing the very best to surround ourselves with people to make these decisions from the medical field, from the religious field, um, um, from leaders of the church. This is why it's so significant and each church is calling on God and asking, what do we do? How should we move forward? What do you want us to see? How can we reach more people? How can we love more people? Understanding there are people on both sides of the aisle. That's why we obey our government officials. That's why most churches shut down in the sense of gathering physically. But they continued, right? We continued. I mean, we saw more people come online. We saw new families join us online. Our giving, for the most part, has done really well. Like, God was still doing incredible things despite us not physically gathering. In fact, I think a lot of things that he's shown us that we need to do better on, that we need to improve on. I think, man, there's a lot of learning that most churches, if they're good, healthy, growing churches, have learned during this pandemic. But here's a second principle I want you to know too, is that um, if government commands us to sin, we must disobey. I know for those of you that didn't like this, you're like, yeah. And some of you that love this may not like this. The government commands us to sin. We must disobey. The early church, the early church was constantly commanded to keep quiet. Stop talking about Jesus of Nazareth. Stop talking about this death and resurrection. Stop talking about repenting and, and forgiveness of sins and, and following Jesus and giving your life to Christ and becoming a part of the church. The, I mean, the early, the early church and the early church leaders, they were commanded to keep quiet by the Jewish leaders, by Roman officials. They were told to be quiet. And yet Jesus had something else because Jesus is still the ultimate authority in our lives. In Acts, Acts 5.29, he says, But Peter and the apostles replied, We must obey God rather than any human authority. Wait a minute, whoa, whoa, what? Wait, hey, you just got done talking about this idea that we are to obey our, our, our earthly authorities, our government. We are, to, we are to submit to them. And now you're saying now, but, but this is, is, doesn't this contradict each other? No. Let's go back. If our government causes us or asks us to sin, to do the things that are against the authority of God, to do the things that are against the law, to do the things that are against grace and truth, then you and I have an opportunity and, a obli and an obligation to disobey them then. We must obey God rather than any human authority. Now, some would argue that some of the things that they're doing right now is causing us to sin. And I would say, no, I don't think so. We're not being caused to sin. We're not being asked to do immoral things. We're not. Now, if, 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 a, if a, a government asks the church to stop meeting, to stop worshiping, to stop um, taking the elements, to stop sharing our faith, then yeah, absolutely. Then we have to be ready to receive the consequences that are coming our way. But as long as we hold truth to Jesus and his word, the Holy Spirit will show us. And yeah, then we, we have to disobey the government. But not out of hatred. Out of love and humility, which is what I want to get to. So here, let me spend the last few moments talking about, I just want to share with you my heart. I just want to take the last few minutes as, as, as kind of uh, as, as a brother uh, to all of my brothers and sisters watching, even if you don't know Jesus, um, as, as a pastor of Avenue Church, I don't take that lightly. 
Um, in fact, I, f I feel like most of the times that I'm, in a, I'm in a position I don't deserve to be in. I feel like I'm in a position that I don't know if I'm even equipped to be in. And I find usually that's usually when God works the most in all of us is that it's in the places when we don't feel equipped, in the places when we don't have the strengths maybe to do it. It's like in our weaknesses, God's kind of like, yes, I can now do this. And, and that's what I feel like. But I want to share, share two things with, my, with just my heart today to you. Regardless of what side you find yourself on politically, ideologically, theologically, regardless of where you find yourself, I just want to share just to you right now my heart. Here's this. Here's what I'm hoping for the church. Number one is we would get back to humility. That we would get back to humility. There are Christians who are doing whatever the government wants, and there are Christians who are against what is taking place. And that even goes for churches and worship. There are Christians that are against the church meeting together again physically, and there are, there are, and, and there are people in churches that are saying, no, we need to get together. And listen, this isn't new. Like, there's always been somehow kind of division in the church. I mean, the Reformation is a great example of that in the 1500s and the 1600s. You know, we see that. Um, but if you want, take some time today and go read chapter uh, 14 of Romans. And you're going to see, even in the early church, they had, they had differences about understanding church and worship and what they are to do. Chapter, uh, Romans chapter 14 did that. Um, and there is division, but we need to learn we need to learn to be gracious and patient with one another. That's what we need to learn. We need to learn to be gracious and patient with one another, with brothers and sisters, because at the end of the day, regardless of where you stand, regardless of your opinions, regardless of what you believe, we are still unified because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. What he did for us through his resurrection, we are still unified. His brother, James, the brother of Jesus, says, and he gives grace generously, even to the people who spit at him and don't even believe he exists. He gives grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. Listen, we have to learn to love, and yet it's okay to still disagree. We've got to learn how to love, even if we disagree. Because disagreeing doesn't mean that I'm against my brother or sister. It just means I have a different viewpoint. But at the end of the day, we're still in this together. Because masks have nothing to do with salvation. It has nothing to do with worship, regardless of what side you're on. Regathering physically has nothing to do with salvation, and regathering has nothing to do, in a sense, with personal worship. At the end of the day, we've got to learn to live with grace through humility. That's what I'm hoping for. We have got to be humble. Consider others better than yourselves. We have not done that very well. The second thing is this is that becoming, become a slave to people. This is what Jesus teaches us. This is what the New Testament writers teach us. We have got to become a slave to people. And here's what it is. Then Paul writes to another church in the city called Corinth. He says, even though I am free, and I hope you get this, because this is kind of where I wanted to get all of us today. Even though I am free, Paul is saying, even though I'm a free man with no master, meaning earthly master, meaning some earthly kingdom, something like that, um, that he's not a slave to anybody, but to Jesus, right? I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. <laughs> I mean, do you understand what that is saying? 
When I became a Christian, this is one of the first things that I learned to understand about humility and grace and truth is that I become a slave to people to bring as many people to Christ as possible. For me, it's this idea, that's why I will do anything short of sin. I will do anything short of sin to get as many people to Jesus. Listen to me. Uh, 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 I'm going to get ahead of myself. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited right now. When I was with the Jews, now understand what he's saying here. He's going to say this multiple times with three different kinds of people. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. Do you understand that? I lived like a Jew to bring other Jews to Christ. Here's what he, what he, what he means. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. Even though I am not subject to the law, meaning the Old Testament, because now there's a new covenant that's through Jesus, right? There's this new covenant. I'm no longer obligated by the law. Now love compels me through the truth and grace of Jesus, through Jesus' death and resurrection. I too lived under that law, even though I'm not subject to the law. I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. He goes on to say about another group. When I'm with the Gentiles, that would be people like you and me, who do, uh, who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. Meaning he doesn't really even bring up the Old Testament. He doesn't really bring up the first five books of the Old Testament. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. Love your neighbors yourself and love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the law of Christ. Here's another group. When I'm with those who are weak, I share their weaknesses, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I don't know if that, if that, if you're a Christian and that doesn't get you pumped, I don't know what to tell you anymore. Like, I don't, there's literally nothing else that I can say on any Sunday moving forward or anything we do on video or anything else we read outside of what Paul had just mentioned. He goes on to say, I do everything, I do everything to spread the good news and share in his blessings. Don't you realize that in the race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? Yeah, that's right. There's only, whenever you do a race, only one person gets first place. So run to win. That's what he's saying. He's saying, so run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I am not just shadow boxing. And here's where, I, where, here's here where we're going to end it. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that uh, uh, after preaching to others, uh, um, I myself might be disqualified. So here's what he's saying. You've got to hear what he's saying. He's, like, he's saying, in this, I do whatever I possibly can to get as many people to Jesus as I possibly can. I will do whatever I can to get as many people to Jesus as I possibly can. Therefore, when I'm with people, I will do what they need me to do to get them to Christ. And it may be completely opposite of this group over here. I will do whatever I have to do with this group of people to get them to Jesus. That's what he's saying. Now, he's not saying, I want to sin this. That's why he says, I want to stick to the law of Christ, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbors yourself, right? That's what he's saying. That's the law of Christ. That's the foundation, right? But he's saying that in order to do that, I got to train. That's what the church is so important. That's why getting into God's word is so important. That's why praying is so important. That's why missional communities that we do in our church are so important because we've got to train ourselves to do exactly what God has asked us to do in order to reach people that no one's reaching. That means I will wear a mask if I I have to wear a mask to get people to Jesus. Or that means I won't put down people who are wearing a mask so I can get people who are wearing a mask to Jesus. Do you understand what this is all about? This is exactly what he's talking about. Come on, church. Doesn't this get you excited or motivated to do the things that God has to, calls us to do? Which gets me to the purpose. Does our citizenship as Americans dictate our faith? Or does our faith dictate our citizenship as Americans? By goodness, it better be this. Because if it's not this, then you don't get Jesus. Because I am a follower of Jesus before I'm an American citizen. Hands down, end of story, no discussion. 
That's who I am. Because I have brothers of Christ in Canada and Mexico. I have sisters in Christ in Europe and Africa and the Middle East and Asia and Australia. The church is the focus of every Christ follower, not just the country we happen to be born into. So the question is, are we united? Are we united? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> because Jesus gave his very life. He gave his very life for the Pharisees and the Sadducees of his day. He gave his life for Pharaoh of Egypt. He gave his life, listen, to Caesar and to the Roman, to the Roman authorities and to the church in Rome and to the Jewish people all around the known world and to the Gentiles. Jesus gave his life for Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Independents, because Jesus would never side with one or the other. Because in doing so, he's standing against somebody, and Jesus doesn't stand against people. He's for them. And if he's for them, and Paul is willing to do everything that he possibly can to be for us, then we have an obligation and a duty to be for all people. The question is, is are we training ourselves to do just that? Are we for people who wear masks, who feel safe to wear masks, and who will maybe stay at home? Are we for them? Are we for people who are, you know what, they don't want to wear a mask? And you can sit here and say all day long, well, they don't love their brother or sister. But if you don't show up and you condemn them, then you don't love them either. See, it's, it's not one's better than the other. It's to say, I will do whatever it takes to love my brother and sister, and I will do whatever it takes to reach people with the gospel of Jesus, to help people understand how much he loves them, to get them to a place of repentance, and to get them to a place of following him. That's the mission of Avenue, to help people see, find, and follow Jesus. We need to be united. You know why? because it's worth it. Uniting one another is what will change the world. Loving one another is what will change our world. Now, next week, I'm really excited about next week, and that's why I hope for many of you, you'll join us. Whether online or in person, we want you to register. Please do so. Please do so. Help us to know so we can have a good count Invite somebody. Invite somebody first online. Join us online. And I'll, we're going to show you this week about how cool uh, the things that we've been doing to get ready because we have understand something so important, and that's what we're going to share with you this week as well. But next week, we're going to start a new series called When Life Gives You. When Life Gives You. And I, I, we're going to do four weeks on this. We're going to celebrate. We have a number of things we're going to be doing next week during the service. I'm not going to tell you because we're going to celebrate. I, I, I'm pumped. I'm excited and I'm ready. I hope you are too. And I hope that not so much to the point that you're just excited to come. I hope you're excited to invite somebody. Bring somebody with you because that's what it is. That's what it needs to be. It's going to be a four-week series that reveals how, um, how we can grow during difficult times in life by preserving, trusting God, forgiving others, and serving others. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to show you how we make lemonade out of lemons. All right? That's the hope. And then again, I want to share with you, please sign up. All you have to do is go to our website. When you do, you just put your name in, which service you're attending, if you're staying online, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., going to the 11 a.m. family service, 
or how many people are going to come with you. So you and two others, which is, if you have three people coming, just put two others because you've already signed up and then you'll have two others with you. That's what we're hoping for you. I hope this has helped today. Um, I hope you've seen my heart and I hope you know how much I do love you. And really, I hope you got today how much I'm trying to unify what God is trying to unify. That's it. We're in this together. I'm no better than you. And you're no better than me. We are in this together. Let's be unified. Let's love the way that God has asked us to love. And let's show the world the hope that we have in Jesus' death and resurrection. Let's pray together. God, thank you for today. Thank you for our time together. Thank you for this online experience. But God, I'm excited for what's to come. I'm excited for our new online experience that's going to take place next week. I'm excited the fact that we're physically going to gather two different hours and we're going to have three options in those hours, God. I'm excited for the churches that are already meeting and I'm excited for the churches that are still waiting and trying to figure this stuff out. God, I pray that you continue to use them in the online world. Help them to grow in that and help them to reach more people because, God, we are in this together. There is no church that is better or worse. We are in this together. And God, I just pray that the world would see the church unify. I pray, God, that Avenue Church would become more unified because of this and that we would love our brother, that we would love our sister, that we'd put our selfish desires behind and that we would repent of the things that we have put on social media. We would repent of the things that we have said to one another. We would repent of the awful thoughts that we've had, the things that have filled our hearts that are not of you. God, that we would just say, I'm sorry. And we know that you've already forgiven us. You just want to recognize we you just want us to recognize that and lord i just pray that as we move forward as today is pentecost sunday and we celebrate in a sense that the holy spirit came to the church and then that that became this explosion of the move of god in the first century in the second century in the third century the fourth century that gets us all the way to the 21st century because of the Holy Spirit, Father. I pray that this, that this congregation, that this group of people, whether they've, they've yet to have come, but they're coming next week for the first time, or that they've joined us online, and, and the new people that are going to be coming our way, Father, I pray that they would just so, whether they're online or here, that they would feel this love, that they would feel this passion of who you are because of the love that is shared and shown in us. God, we love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, love you guys. I can't wait for next week. We'll see you. Come ready to celebrate. And more importantly, if you're staying online, be prepared to celebrate at home. I even maybe invite somebody to your home with you. Do a watch party if you're going to stay there. Maybe if you're in a small group, please don't do this by yourself. Or at least do it as a family. Or again, invite friends and family who aren't a part of our church to come and watch with you or online with you as well. Love you guys. Have a great week. We will see you online or in person next Sunday. God bless.